right, I'm going to take care of a couple of uh, rational functions, graphing them by hand with a sign table um, through factoring and some holes. Um, first one here is f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2 over 4x squared plus 8x minus 12. I'm going to factor first. I see a 4 is common on the bottom. So I'm going to factor that out and get this. I see that the top is a, these are down two trinomials that factor. All right, so I'm going to get x minus 2 over x plus 1 all over 4 times x plus 3 x minus 1. Nothing cancels here. Nothing cancels here. So those are my functions, and that's a fourth group progression. So I want to identify range domains, some of the stuff like that. So I'm going to start by saying, hey, well, it's irrational, so it's all real, but the bottom can't be zero, so negative 3 is an asymptote and positive 1. Likewise, I'm going to see that, I'm going to see here that there are zeros on the top. I'll make the function, let's see, positive 2 and negative 1 again. Zeros are coming from here, asymptotes come from there, all right? So, I have those things, and then I like to go back to the original function and get the y-intercept. So I go all the way back over here, and I plug in 0 for x, and I can quickly see it's negative 2 over negative 12. Negative, negative is a positive. How about positive 1, 6? All right, so there we go. So I've done all that, and I know a little bit about the graph now, all right? I also know by looking at the original function, all right, Again, x one x squared over four x squared. If you have a really big number, if you think to yourself, "Hey, what happens as I take that function way out towards a really big number, like a million, two million, ten million? What's going to happen? What happens is this stuff becomes insignificant because when you're squaring a million, it doesn't matter. And these cancel, you go to a positive one fourth. Again, the rule is that the lead terms, as long as the order of them is the same coefficients become it. So it approaches 1, 4. All right, this lets us go into a sign table. So I'm going to go do a page here and add a page here first. Add a page and then go to a page. All right, so this lets me make a table then. So I have an x and I have values and I want to get these four values in order. So I see negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2. And I see the four binomials. Now, since the four is positive, I really don't need to include it. I'm not going to because the four has no effect, but the stretcher comp it compresses it to this one fourth. So I'm not going to bother with it. All right. So the first thing I know is that my zeros are negative one and two. And my undefined, my undies are here. So now I just got to make the sign table. I'll do it in red, and I'm going to go down the table. So I have a big negative number in here, like negative a million. Negative, 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 four negatives, like a positive. In between them, I'm going to try to do this all in colors to help you out. Negative two is negative, negative, positive, negative. So this is a negative. Try blue next. Again, in between negative one, one, I think it's zero. Negative is positive. Then one and a half, kind of pain in between. Negative, positive, 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 and negative. Then I think of a really big number, like 10 million. Obviously, these are all positive in this case, so I get positive. And that is my sign table. All right? And I see I have these sections. So now I'm going to grab all this and shrink it down so I can have a section here to make my graph. So I'm going to make my graph by hand and I compare it to the answer key here. All right? So I'm going to graph y, x, put it in red, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Good enough. I'm going to start plotting things I know, and I'm going to make the graph in green today. I know there's an asymptote at negative 3. I know there's an asymptote at positive 1. I know the horizontal asymptote was at 1, 4, and there was a 0, 1, 6. So I'll put the dot here, and then just above the dot on the y-intercept is 1, 4. This is not exactly the scale. 
So it's going to be close. All right. And I know that the asymptote has to do with things going outside. And I'm going to try to use the color so it really jumps out at us here. All right. My first thing is to the left of negative three, it was negative. So out here, oops, it was negative. Imagine this. Or positive. What am I doing? I'm sorry. Again, the red sign up here is positive, so it's up here. Again, knowing that it has to approach the asymptote vertically and horizontally means it has to come horizontal here and vertical here. So it's just connecting the dots. So there's the first curve. And then it's on the other side of between negative 3 and negative 1, it's negative. So it's negative here. All right, so it's, and it's, oh, I forgot to plot my zeros. My zeros are negative 1, 2. So it's going from the 0 to the negative. So there it is. And I'll erase the negative sign. All right. The next sign is it's positive. Now I can cross, and you go through the one second, I can cross that line. So here we go, it goes through and up to that positive sign there. All right. And then I'll move, the, I'll move that positive out of my way. Boom. All right. Now, the next thing is it's purple, and it says that it's negative between 1 and 2. So it's negative here. And it says purple, it's purple, here's purple negative, and again, it's green. And then it says it's positive after the, after the 0. So it comes and goes to that asymptote. The positive 1 right there. All right. So this is what my graph looks like. It asks for the intercepts and whatnot. So I'm going to see how I did. I'm going to group this, move to the other side, compare it to the answers. I think I got it all. Group, group. Move this across over here. All right. I'm going to go back to that single page. There's my graph. It asks you for the domain. I can find the domain right here. And it asks me for the x-intercepts, which are the zeros. So they're right there. X-intercepts, negative 2 and negative 1. And there is our graph, all right? And there's the scale, and mine was not, but this is correct. Oh, and this red curve would have been green. There you go. And again, you have to walk through, find the zeros, go through the process. Finding the horizontal asymptote is probably the most difficult. So this time, instead of covering the answer, we're going to work through it for problem number two. All right? And again, I'm going to jump to the factor to answer here three times x minus 2 over x plus 4 all over x minus 3 times x plus 4. This is the factor. I made my quotation there. It's not good. Immediately I noticed that the x plus 4s are the same top and bottom. Meaning that the asymptote is there, all right? Meaning the asymptote is there, okay? And I'm going to just uh, cover the answer for a second so we can work our way to it, all right? Otherwise, it becomes too distracting to look at the answer. All right. I immediately see the domain. I want to do that first in vertical asymptotes. So I'll start with the domain here, and I'll do it green. The domain is all real, but it can't be 0 on the bottom. So it's x can't be equal to 3 and negative 4. I also know that the asymptotes the vertical asymptote here, because it's a whole, I can identify three things. The vertical asymptote is x equals positive 3. Because we also know since these are going to cancel or could cancel, one we realize negative 4 is that, ne that negative 4 is simply a hole in this function. So the hole is at x equals negative 4. I don't know what value that would be at. We can figure that out, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So think about it. Just from the domain, the vertical asymptote and the holes. We've taken care of that. Now the x-intercepts aren't that either. The zeros. Realize that x negative four can't be a zero, so there's one zero. And x equals two. That is the one zero. So there's our x-intercept. The horizontal asymptote again. The powers match. Nor this stuff. The x cancel. How about three over We have a horizontal asymptote. The limit as x approaches infinity. And that of x is going to be positive three. That is, again, our horizontal asymptote. So think about it. I'm going to erase these so you can read it, but I've crossed all those out there. The only thing left is to sketch the graph. All right, so I'm going to exit out, and we're going to 
Well, we got to make our sign table first. Yeah, about that. So I'm going to leave space here. Move some of this stuff up. Moving that stuff, all right? You got to make a sign table. And again, this one's not so big because I only have to include x minus 2 and x minus 3. Because the x plus 4s, if they're both negative, they're positive. They're both positive, they're positive. But you need to include negative 4, 3, and 2. Negative 4, 2, and 3. All right, in our table. All right, and then again, this is our f of x. We know that this was uh, undefined. We know 4 is undefined. We know 2 was a 0. That's our x-intercept. So again, I'll use red. Negative, negative, positive. Positive, negative, 3. So there's zero, how about 0? Negative, negative, positive. And again, we'd expect that it wouldn't change because this is just a whole. We'll come back to that in a second. 2.5. Positive, negative, negative, and then both positives. All right. So we're going to start sketching a graph knowing there's a hole here. Again, I'll add a page. I'm going to go dual page here. I need this sign table. So I'm going to sketch the graph for our information down here on this side. Y, X. I'll do it black this time. Vertical is at X equals 3. There's the asymptote. We know the horizontal is also at 3. All right. We know there was a 0 at 2. That's our big dot here. And we know between 2 and 3 it was negative. So it's coming. So I'm going to even start with that sign right there and say, hey, it's coming through here. Oh, and I could have found the y intercept pretty easy by plugging 0 into the original function. I get a positive 2. All right, so I'm going to pull that line back off the graph on the other side here. Just throw it away. So positive 2 here. And I know out at negative 4 there's a hole. And I can tell it's going to be close to here. So it comes in. There it is on this side. Now, I also know that it's positive to the right of 3. Fast approach, both asymptotes. All right, and that's got to be our function. I check on the other side. Boom, there it is. If I take my graph here, group it and bring it over and compare them. Now, this, these graphs, guys, they're just a lot of practice. You've got to just keep on grinding at this. There's no easy answer outside of practice. You need to do lots of these problems. All right, we're going to start using calculators before long, but you've got to see what to tell you. And there it is. If you are curious what the value is right here, you would have to say, ah, okay, well, I can use the function if I just ignore the whole. I can know the non-value by plugging in x equals negative 4 into what after the cancel. So I get 3 times negative 6 over negative 7. I get positive 18 sevenths, right, which is like 2 and 5 sevenths. So that's exactly what that's at. All right, but again, we'll worry about where those holes are located later on. That's why range is so tough on these problems. Again, guys, keep practicing, all right, and we're going to have more of these on the next one.